Here's another case. Um, patient came in with a sinus tract uh, right at around the gum line or a few millimeters below the gum line uh, around number 13. So I looked at the x-ray and I thought, okay, well, you know, 14 is definitely looks like some red lucency up there. <laughs> And uh, I, uh, so if, I think it was anybody that would just jump in and do number 14 right away. And, but I said, okay, let me stop for a second and do a sinus track uh, tracer. So I had to put a gutta percha in and it doesn't look like it's going through 14. And this is where the, the fistula opening is, right here. And it's going towards mesial, so I took another angle it's going more towards the mesial, but I'm looking again, and I'm you know, looking some, um, at some radial lucency around 11, and that's where it was, number 11. So we got that one taken care of. Here's another case, um, kind of interesting, I wanted to show you, it's, I don't get too many cases like this, maybe once every two, three years, that um, probably six, seven-year-old patient, um, comes in for uh, with a whole bunch of cavity on number 31. You can tell from the roots how open the roots are. So it's really wide open apex. And so we tried some calcium hydroxide. And this is um, three months. So you can <laughs> see it's uh, starting to work a little bit. We're getting a little elongation around the root and also closure at the apex. So I did that every three months. Here's at six months. So we're getting a little bit better on, on the mesial roots. And here is at nine months. So I'm getting a little bit better on the uh, mesial roots. But the problem with calcium hydroxide is that on baby T or very young patients is it calcifies or it, cal yeah, it calcifies the roots. So you can have all of a sudden closure of the roots and so you can't really reach down to the apex. So finally finished it up and that was, I think, three months ago. Here's a case from uh, 2002, uh, number six and seven, I think it is. Uh, radiolucency, he had silver points and an amalgam retrofill, which is definitely a no-no. You don't do um, amalgam <laughs> against uh, uh, silver points and some uh, resorption on number seven at the apex. You can see how much resorption you have as far as the length of the root, how far down it is from the central. So we did, uh, here's a, another angle of it. And so we did uh, epicoectomies on both teeth with MTA. There is uh, MTA against that uh, silver point. I couldn't get that out. So this is a uh, right after this is a one year recall on that. Here's a two year recall on that. So it's starting to go away as far as um, radiolucency goes. It um, looks like it's healing, um, but it's not completely gone. So I finally told the dentist, yeah, go ahead and do the, put the crowns on. It looks like it's healing. But this is uh, two years later now. So he puts the crowns on and still some radiolucency <laughs> around number 10. It's getting better here, and uh, this is at seven years. So you can see, this is what I was uh, talking to you about, scar tissue healing. Basically, at the apex, it's healing, but there's a scar tissue up here, and that's considered healed.